Okay, so before we begin, I just want one person to confirm if they can see my my slides here. So I'm just going to pick um, who is this? Uh, Deborah, can you see my slides? Okay, brilliant. Okay, so today we are just going to cover common sized financial statements and that takes recon uh, for that assignment. Okay, so I just prepared uh, some few slides here uh, so that we can do the assignment practically. Okay. Uh, so some ground rules, you should always mute your max and then uh, I'll give you a, a platform for, for questions. That's when you can ask questions. As for now, up to that time, you are not allowed to ask questions. Then, so today we are going to do common sized financial statements. Okay, the assignment was like this. It was saying... Okay, for your allocated company, you are supposed to calculate, um, uh, do a vertical analysis of statement of financial position of your allocated company and uh, compare it to, to TSL. Then also B, do a horizontal analysis of the same, comment on the material items only. Then C, show the tax reconciliation of the two companies in the form of a pie diagram. Then C, you are required to identify any differences in the revenue recognition. Okay. Okay. So uh, the vertical analysis and the horizontal analysis, we can call it a common sized analysis. Okay. Hey, let me admit this person. Okay. So what are common sized financial statements? Okay, common size analysis also referred to as vertical analysis or horizontal analysis is a tool that, that financial managers use to analyze financial statements, that is straightforward. It evaluates financial statements by expressing each line item as a percentage of the base amount. That is revenue for income statement analysis and then uh, total assets for balance sheet analysis for that period. Okay, let's say we have an example. Let's say we want to, co to, to compare, which is the biggest school. Um, maybe in Mulawayo we have, uh, may, maybe we want to compare Domini Conventry to Nitty Grid. Yeah? You see, Nitty Grid is just a small um, a private college. When you uh, want to compare it to to, to Dominic Conventry, you can't just look at the income statement and 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 think that you you can find uh, some meaningful analysis in there or you can do some meaningful analysis there because um, Dominic Conventry, the revenue will be billion for Nitikri, the revenue might be only fifty thousand or even less, <laughs> so. So if I want to compare those two companies, what do I do? We use this, what we call common sized financial statements or common size analysis. So what we do for each and every item in the, let's say we are looking at the um, statement of uh, profit and loss and other companies income, uh, for each and every item, we are going to divide that item with the revenue. Okay, then let's say uh, uh, maybe gross profit of a revenue or net profit of a revenue or other income of a revenue or administrative expenses of a revenue then uh, for balance sheet you always divide each line item by total assets okay so we'll be saying uh, cash and cash equivalents divided by total assets then trade receivables divided by total assets then trade pair was read by total assets and all, you will be dividing each and every item by total assets. For cash flow statements, you can also do a common size analysis on, on cash flow statement, whereby you'll be dividing by maybe cash flow from operating activities or net cash flow. It depends on what um, you actually want. Okay, for the purpose of our, our assignment, um, we are going to do only the balance sheet analysis. 
Okay. Uh, the analysis helps to understand the impact of each item in the financial statement and its contribution to the resulting figure. Okay. So we have this scenario, the first scenario with FEM A, FEM B. In our example, it was Dominic Convener against Nitigrity. Okay. So if you just look at the uh, income statement as it is, you can actually you actually see that uh, revenue for Dominic Convener will be big. And if you want to convey it to, to Nitigrity, Nitigrity will be very tiny. Okay. That is when you use the regular profit analysis. But then when you common size those financial statements, you can actually see that nitty-gritty is actually performing or nitty-gritty is actually bigger than Dominican Federal because you see uh, you will be comparing like to like. Okay, you will see it when we do the it practically. What I try to I'm trying to mean. Okay, what is, is the formula that we use? The technique can be used to analyze the three primary financial statements, that is the balance sheet, income statement, and the cash flow statement. Okay, I said this earlier. In the balance sheet, the common base item to which other items are expressed is the total assets. I also said this. While in the income statement, it is total revenue. So the formula will be the amount of the individual item in the balance sheet, let's say cash and cash equivalents, then we divided by the amount of the base item in the balance sheet, it will be the total assets. Okay. Then uh, types of common size analysis. Okay, so common size analysis can be conducted in two ways. That is vertical analysis. That is our requirement number one. Then we have also horizontal analysis. That is our requirement number two. Vertical analysis refers to the analysis of specific line items in relation to a base item within the same financial period. For example, in the balance sheet, we can assess the proportion of, of inventory by dividing the inventory line using total assets as the base item. Okay, so when we are talking about uh, vertical analysis, we are just looking at, let's say, the balance sheet for 2020. Okay, so just uh, we are just comparing to say, okay, if it is cash and cash equivalents, how is it comparing to the total assets? If it is uh, loans and borrowings or long term portion of loans and borrowings, how does it compare to to the total assets? If it is um, a deferred tax asset, how does it compare to total assets? If it is trade payables or trade payables, you just comparing how a line item compare to total assets. That's vertical analysis. Okay, then uh, on the other hand, horizontal analysis, yes, we are still doing to say, uh, how does infantry compare to total assets, but you are not going to do for a single year, you are going to do for more than one year, maybe two years, maybe three years, uh, maybe four years, even to 10 years. So, uh, depending uh, with the information that you have or what you want to achieve. That's horizontal analysis. Horizontal analysis, you just know that it will be more than one year. Vertical analysis, it will be for only one year. On the other hand, horizontal analysis refers to the analysis of specific line items and comparing them to a similar line item in the previous or subsequent financial period. Although common size analysis is not as detailed as trend analysis using ratios, it does provide a simple way of financial managers to analyze financial statements. Okay. So here yeah, I'm going, I'm just going to cover balance sheet common size analysis because uh, our assignment is based on the, we should base our common size analysis on the balance sheet. Okay. The balance sheet common size analysis mostly uses the total assets value as the best value. On the on the balance sheet, the total assets value equals the value of total liabilities and shareholders, shareholders' equity. Yes, you know that from our accounting equation, assets is equal to liabilities plus, share, plus equity. A financial manager or investor uses the common size analysis to see how a firm's capital structure compares to rivals. Okay, so if you do the common size uh, analysis or the vertical analysis, for your given number, let's say you are given uh, delta. Then maybe uh, from your common size, from your vertical analysis, we are saying 
if we are comparing cash and cash equivalents to the total assets, maybe it's 10%. Comparing it to TSL Limited, maybe it's only 5%. You can actually see that Delta is at a, a better liquidity position compared to, 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 to TSL Limited. The same applies, let's say, uh, you are comparing the long-term portion of loans and borrowings, uh, and you have realized that uh, the long-term borrowings are um, making up 50% of the total assets for Delta Limited. And then if you compare it to TSO Limited, you, can, you see that uh, those the, the, the same long-term portion of loans and borrowings is only making up to 15% of the total assets. Okay. So you can actually see from that analysis that Delta Limited is highly geared as compared to, 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 to TSL Limited. Okay. For example, if the value of long-term days in the relation, I've uh, said this example, then what is the importance of co common size analysis? Okay. One of the benefits of using common size analysis is that it allows investors to identify drastic changes in a company's financial statement. Okay, in this case, we are comparing, let's say for the balance sheet, we're comparing 2019 and 2020 to see uh, how the, 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 our um, structure has changed. This mainly applies when the financial are compared over a period of two or more or three years, that is horizontal analysis. Any significant movements in the financials across several years can help investors decide whether to invest in the company, for example, large drops in the company's profits in two or more consecutive years may indicate that the company is going through financial distress. Similarly, considerable increases in the value of assets may mean that the company is implementing an expansion or acquisition strategy, making the company attractive to investors. Okay. Uh, I think that's self-explanatory. Common size analysis is also an ex excellent tool to compare companies of different sizes, but in the same industry. Like what we were saying, we're comparing um, Dominican Venry and Nitigrity. They are in the same industry, but they are of different sizes. But if we are going to common size them, we'll be able to compare them. If we are just going to use a regular income statement or the regular financial statements, we will not be able to compare those two. Looking at their financial data can review their strategy and their largest expenses that give them a competitive edge over other comparable companies. For example, some companies may sacrifice margins to gain a large market share, which increases revenues at the expense of profits margins. Okay, such a strategy allows the company to grow faster than comparable companies because they are more preferred by investors. Okay, so that's it for common size financial statements. So what's the next step that you do before we go to the tax consideration? Okay, so our question is saying, do a vertical analysis of the statement of financial position of your allocated company. And let's say you are allocated delta uh, from our example. So uh, what you do is um, you go to Delta website. Uh, so that's Delta website, um, Delta, Delta Corporation, Zimbabwe. Okay, so you go to, where is the website? Okay. We go to the website like this. Mm. You want to download the latest financial statements. So you should, um, the best place to download those is the website, the common website. Luckily, all those commons are listed. So those financial statements are available to the public. Uh, I wanted to show you how you could download the financial statements, but it looks my network is quite low, quite slow. Okay. Anyway, when the network picks up, I will show you how to download them. But in this case, um, I have downloaded those financial statements. So this is the Delta uh, reporting pack. Then we have also the TSL reporting pack here. Okay, let me just check whether if it's now fine. Okay, um, so this is the Delta website. 
So you would normally go to the investor relations. In this case, we have investor here. So you should click on that one. It will give you the link to all like to all the financial statements that have been published by Delta. Okay. Okay. Uh, so on the investor relations, you go to. I should go to the annual annual reports here. You see this annual report, so you should clear you click here. Uh, la, 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 I don't know why my network is so slow, but anyway, I'll show you. Okay, I just want someone to confirm if they can hear me and if they can also see the slide. Trust, can you hear me? Trust, can you hear me? Okay, Carlos, can you hear me? Uh. Who can hear me? Anyone? Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, my network is quite slow. better now so what you do is you go to investor relations and then under investor relations you should be able to see the list of the um, uh, la, 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 okay then under investor we have corporate governance code of conduct dividend payout shape of means uh, shareholder um, notices result center so on the resort center, we have a brief financial statement. This abridged means summaries. Then we have annual reports. I prefer using annual reports. Okay, so we click on annual reports. Um, it should uh, lead us to a list of all the annual reports that have been uh, published by Delta up to this date. Okay, so as you can see, of the 2020 annual report here and also we have the 2019 annual report here uh, and also the 2018 2017 and so forth so here you can click download if you want to download it uh, i want to download the 20 uh, 20, uh, 20, not 2018. Okay, I've already downloaded this one, so I don't need to download it again. But that's how you download the financial statements. If you need for TSL, uh, you just do the same. The hope that will be a slight, a, a slight, a slightly different, but um, the procedure is just the same. You just have to go to where they are talking about investors. Okay. Um, okay, after downloading the financial statements, what you do is uh, we want to go to the balance sheet because we are doing vertical analysis, our vertical analysis on the balance sheet. If it was the income statement, you would go to the income statement. Mm, where is the balance sheet? 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 Uh, corporate governance and uh, the first thing will be the income statement then the second thing will be the balance sheet okay we have the auditors report here then yes with the financial statements yes so as you can see the first was the um, profit loss account then we also have the balance sheet so the problem will be on how to copy this because um, it was going to be simple if this were on soft copies, but 
on 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 excel but now we, it's in pdf so what do you do so what do you do uh the the only thing to do here is to copy and paste so let's say you want to copy the first one you can just say uh, the problem you, you have to keep one by one if this if it is these descriptions maybe the amounts you can actually copy you can't copy because if you say if you copy like this um nah, 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 copy then you go to excel you want to paste maybe let's paste as values mm, or as text say so, okay you see it's going to distort everything so yeah it's quite tricky you have to copy one item by item i don't know if there is a, another way of doing it let's say you want to copy proper plant equipment just say copy proper plant equipment then you paste here then you also go back to the amount then you copy copy the amount then you paste it here you see these gaps um if we have these gaps excel is not recognizing it as a number so you might need again to reduce these gaps so that excel will recognize it as a number now it's now recognizing it as a number so you drew for each and every um you drew for each and every item that's where the problem actually is the assignment was very simple but in order to convert this into excel so that you can do the workings you can only do the workings in excel but uh, you can also do the, do them uh in word but uh, it will be something else okay so what i did i actually copied it one by one here so i'm not going to copy this today uh, because I have already copied these ones. So what we have here is um, this one. I copied it here. This is for Delta and also alongside the TSA one. Okay. So what you realize is if you compare these financial statements, okay, this is Delta. Let's just, go. just uh, let me add it to this one. Let me stitch. Okay, see okay that's fine uh if uh we go to the tsa one we want to go to the balance sheet so there they are very similar they are some things that are very different so we want to see how we can go about it the first thing being that the, the financial aids are different is I unlikely that you find the those companies with the same financial year end. One will be maybe the March, the other one will be September. That's another weakness of our analysis here. But there's nothing that we can do. If it is 2020, it's 2020. Um, where is the fine? These, these are now notes, isn't it? I want to go to where they. I want to go to where there are financial statements. Mm, financial statements, financial statements, financial. Okay, this is the cash flow. This is the change in equity. This is the balance sheet. Okay. So let, let's now compare this one. Of course, we have um, this balance sheet for 2020. Let's just use the inflation adjusted. And then for 2019, this also uh, the only the only uh, the only disclosed the inflation adjusted. So we also have for 2020 and for 2019. But as you can see that um, the year end here. The year end for TSL is 31 October 2020. While list that for um, Delta is uh, 31 March. That's another weakness. 
we won't be able to find any company with the, like the same reporting PA or year end. Okay. But anyways, we just, uh, I was just copying each and every item and pasting it on my Excel. Okay. So as you can see uh, here, we have proper plan equipment. Here we have proper plan equipment. Here we have right of use asset. Here we have right of use asset. Here we have inv investment in our sources. Here we don't have that one. Here we have um, intangible assets. Here we have those ones. Uh, investment in loans. Hey. Investment in loans. Here we don't have the, those ones. So that's another problem because we want, uh, the financial statements are not like congruent. We, they are similar, but the line items that are in the debt of balance sheet are not necessarily the same items that are in the TSL uh, limited balance sheet. So you might need to aggregate some of uh, the, the line items to say maybe if you look at the um, Let's see how I did it. Plan document, plan proper plan document. I just copied it as it is because it was in both balances. The same price right of use in investment and sources because it was so material. I couldn't add it to anything. The intangible assets we had those in both balances. Investment and properties. Investment and property. It was also too material to aggregate. The same price to investment loans. But if you see some uh, like current assets, I had to aggregate those immaterial assets into other assets because they were like different. Let's just look at current assets. We have inventory here from we have inventories here. Um, then here also we have inventory. But here, as you can see, we have biological assets. But in Delta, we don't have biological assets. Uh, Delta again, we have current as tax assets. Here, we don't have that. Here again, we have what? Financial assets at fair value. Do we have that one here? Financial assets at fair value, we do have that one. So I had to aggregate these biological assets and also the tax assets, other assets, into other assets. So as you can see, here, I no longer have biological assets or those uh, current texts. I only have one plan item, other assets. Then I have inventory because inventory is in both balances. Then trade in other CPOs is in both balances. Then also the financial assets at fair value is in both balances. The sum balance to cash in the cash equivalents. Okay, so after doing that, I did the same to even the liabilities. So after doing that, now we want to, to do the vertical analysis. So we said for vertical analysis, we should divide each line item by total assets, okay? So um, uh, we are going to say is equal to our line item divided by total assets. Is equal to, okay? So that's 50, that means proper plan equipment is 52% uh, 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 um, of the total assets. We might need to fix um, our total assets here. So if you want to fix, I, I'm sure you know that with this one, you should put um, a dollar sign here, then also a dollar sign here. So that when we drag this one, it will still reference to the total assets. Okay, so if you drag down, now we have our calculations. Uh, right of use asset is only 0.23% of the total assets. Investment in our sources is only 3.96 compared to total assets. Intangible assets is only 4. Um, Two five for investment, we have zero. Investment loss is only blah blah. So you can actually do your analysis here. Uh, let me remove these ones where we don't have like because I just read, so it was just calculating. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. So if you look at this one, before even calculating for TSO Limited, you can perform some analysis. As we can see here, we said earlier that probable volume payment is constituting more than 50% of, of, of the total assets. That means, um, then if we compare inventories, it's only 11.68. Let's compare total current assets. We have total current assets is is constituting 38.48 percent. Let's go to total current liabilities. It's 33.295. So we can uh, our assets uh, can barely uh, cover our current assets can barely cover our current liabilities. As you can see, current assets 38 percent. Then current liabilities 33 percent. Let's see how. Uh, the financial statements for TOSO Limited are um, comparing to these financial statements. So we do the same thing. We say um, the line item, then we divide each by the total assets, and then we can actually uh, fix our cell. Our cell reference because we still want to every line item to reference to the total assets. So you drag down. Now, we now again have our calculations here. That's why I said it's simple if you use Excel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, okay, okay. Okay, now we have our comparisons. We have common sized financial statements for TSL Limited and also for Delta. As you can see, property. Plan uh, proper plan recruitment is 52% of the total assets for Delta, but uh, for T also is only 35%. What would what can you say about it? Of course, you can do the analysis. If you go to uh, for a particular concern, is uh, let's go to liquidity. Total assets they are comparing to 38%. Uh, for Delta, then 25% for TSO Limited. Let's go to their liabilities. Total account liabilities is 33%, but now, as you can see, for TSO Limited is only 14.82%. So for each um, um, as, as you can see, if the current assets is 25.01%, uh, and we have only 14.82%. So, so, so the current assets for TOS Limited can actually have the, 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 the account of our current liabilities and still will be left with something to, uh, to spend. As opposed to what is happening here for, for Delta Limited, we can barely cover um, our, um, as you can see, let's just calculate the difference. If you say 38 minus 33, the excess is 5.19, then let's compare to um, TSM 25 minus 14, the excess is 10, it's even a double. So from that, we can actually see that as far as liquidity is concerned, TSM limited is better off than Delta. Okay, you can do the same. Let's go. Let's go to gearing. Here we are. We can see that the long-term borrowings are contributing to zero point three two percent of the total assets, and uh, that is for Delta. For TOS Limited is zero point zero one. Still, Delta is highly geared. If we are comparing it to TOS Limited, but in general, both companies are lowly geared because we, we can see that. The long-term borrowings are contributing only to, 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 to less than 1%. So they are both low geared. But when we are comparing the two, um, TSO Limited, as again, is better off. Okay. But this we, we can actually see that as far as financial position is concerned, TSO Limited is better off. But if we were going to look... If we are going to, to look at uh, 
Yeah, okay. If we are not considering this common sized uh, uh, financial space, if we are just comparing the regular, the regular balance sheet, you can actually see that the total assets for TOS Limited is more than half of that of uh, the total assets for Deuda is more than half as compared to uh, TOS Limited. Here we have total assets of 11.2 billion, but here we have only 5.3 billion. Uh, the sum of here, um, we have um, what do we have here? Here we have a billion point zero nine on income liabilities. Here we have four three eight million. Then here current the total equities we have eleven point two nine. Then here we have five point eight. If you are we're going to look at the regular balance sheet, you are going to say Delta Limited is better off. But when we now we have this common sized um, common sized where is that one? Common sized um, financial statements. You can actually see that TOC limited is better off as far as um, as far as a financial position is concerned. Okay, that's the, that's the advantage that we were talking about when we were on those slides. Okay, that's it for, for vertical analysis. You can co comment on anything that you want. Mm -hmm. Anything. You can even look at the retained earnings here to say, okay, the retained earnings here is 7.57, but then for TSA Limited is 61. Still, uh, TSA Limited is able to retain more than what is being retained by Delta. So if I was going to, I was an investor, if I want to choose which company to invest in, of course, I was going to choose TSL Limited because it looks like TSL Limited is better off as compared to a Delta. Okay. We go to the um, uh, horizontal analysis. So horizontal analysis, we have to compare um, year to year. In this case, I just compared 2019 versus 2020 for Delta. Since the procedure is just the same, I didn't compare for, 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 for TSL Limited. So you just do the same thing. We're just saying the line item divided by the total assets. Uh, we fix our cell. Yeah. Okay, then we drag down, 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 down. We do the same thing, that was 2020, we do the same thing to 2019. We say the line item divided by total assets, then we fix the, the cell that we want to reference, okay? We drag, 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 up to blah. Okay, so how does the structure of our balance sheet uh, for, for 2019 compare to 2020? Okay, so as we can see, 2019 the property plan equipment was 58% of, uh, of uh, total assets. In this case, it's 52%. It was a decrease, but a minor decrease. If any, we had a right of, we didn't have a right of use asset in 2019, but now, we have a right of use in 2020. Those are the observations. If you go to investment in our success, we had 3.2% as compared to our assets in 2019. Then now we have 3.96. You see the, 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 the differences are minor. Okay. The sum applies to inventories. We had 9.55 in 2019. Then here we have 11.67. That's again a minor difference. So uh, of a particular concern, that's why the lecture said you should only comment on the material items. So you can comment on everything, just go, like this was no analysis, so you have to comment on where we have drastic changes, okay? So in this case, where, where do we have drastic changes? Okay, let's just look at the cash equivalence 
Creative and creative confidence was 19.56 percent in 2019, but now we only have 1.99. That's an issue. Our our liquidity position here is is compromised because we don't have cash. Uh, in 2019, we had two billion cash in cash equivalents. Here, we have only 225 million. So that's a very good observation here. So we highlight it, it in red. You can actually see that here where we are going is not safe. Uh, do we have another material item or material change? Uh, let's go to gearing. Uh, let's start with the retained earnings. Last year, we were able to retain how much uh, retained earnings? We were able to retain 27.5%. 7%, but this year we were able to return 47. So this year we, we, we performed better off compared to last year because we were able to return more than uh, what we retained in 2019. We go to, um, what is it? We go to gearing. <laughs> last year our gearing was at 7.81%. Then here we have 0 0.32. So we were highly geared in 2019 as compared to 2020. So that's how you can do your, you can comment on anything that you think uh, is necessary. But uh, that's why we call horizontal, we are comparing year to year basis. That's horizontal. So you can actually see that overall uh, the structure of our balance sheet didn't change much from 2019-2020. You can put 2018-2017 and see that and see the trends, whether we are investing more in PPE or in right of use assets or, or we are investing more in inventories. You can see those trends when you can, you you are analyzing more than two years, maybe three, four, five. In this case, it's quite hard. You can actually see the changes but as you can see, the changes are minor. But maybe if you, we are now comparing maybe to 2010, you could see that maybe the proper plan equipment was only 2% of the total assets. But in this case, we now have 52.34%. depends on the information given. Okay, that is it for the horizontal analysis. Okay, well, uh, I'm going to pause and... Um, Ask if you have questions, that is the platform before we jump to the tax reconciliation. So do we have questions on common size financial statements, vertical and horizontal analysis? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> okay, so what happens is for vertical analysis, we say you can actually perform a vertical analysis for a single, com single company, not comparing it to any company. By vertical analysis, we are saying we are just comparing the, 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 that particular financial statement for that single year. In this case, we are comparing for 2020. So we are saying, how does cash and cash equivalents compare uh, to, to, to our total assets in 2020? In that case, we figured out that the cash and cash equivalents is only, uh, what was the percentage? The cash and cash equivalents was, um, 1.99% of the total assets. What about uh, proper plan equipment? Our proper plan equipment is 52%. What about investment in associates? Investment in associates is 3.9%. Okay, so what does it mean? That's where the problem is. What does it mean? Okay, that means here we are, um, as you can see, the structure of our balance sheet, we have uh, more uh, fixed assets as compared to current assets. Current assets, in total, we have 38.48%, but six, fixed assets, we have 61.52%. So as far as uh, uh, solvents is concerned, we might not have a problem because uh, we really have the assets. If the 
the, 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 our creditors are going to 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 uh, to sue us. We 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 just say okay, just sell our PPE, and then we will repay your, your your amounts. Okay, that is the vertical class. We will be comparing. We will be doing the vertical class for a single year. Then after doing the vertical analysis for a single year, we can do again a vertical analysis for a single year for another company, then compare the two. Now, when we go to the horizontal analysis, we are not doing it for a single year. The only difference between the two is for horizontal analysis, we are doing it for more than one year. But the procedure is the same. You can also compare to say, you can also, for the horizontal analysis, after doing for two years, you can do again for TOS Limited, the horizontal analysis for two years, then compare the two to say, okay, for Delta, we have realized that there were no changes from 2019, to, there were no material changes from 2019 to 2020. What about TOS Limited? We can do for TOS Limited and notice maybe there were actually material changes, the composition, the structure of our balance sheet. So still you can do, you can compare two companies using horizontal and vertical analysis. I don't know if I have answered you correctly. Simba, was it clear? Yes. Okay, another question, do you have another question? Yes, it was clear. Yes, mm -hmm. I didn't really get your horizontal entry. Did you divide the way by your Yeah. Uh, trust, can you mute your mic? And mute, mute, yes, mute. Okay, mm -hmm. I was saying on the horizontal analysis, did you divide by total assets as well? Yes, the process is the same way you divide by total assets, but the only difference is you are doing it for more than one year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so since you say this, you can actually do vertical analysis for, for a single company. So it will be the same as horizontal analysis for that particular year. Yes, it will be the same. As you can see, let, uh, let me just show you. Our vertical analysis was here. As you can see, for 2020 vertical analysis, our property planning government was 52.34%. For horizontal analysis, it was just the same percentage. But then we have also, we have compared it to 2019. So now we have two years. Oh, okay. If it is a single year, it will be just vertical analysis. If we have more than a single year now, we we are not doing a horizontal analysis. So the vertical analysis is also embedded in the horizontal analysis. Oh, I see now. Thank you. Okay, another question, Trust. Do you have a question? We actually have him. Okay, anyone? Ruth, was that clear? Uh, yeah. Okay, Tafazo. Okay, you get Hi, uh, hi Tafazo, how are you? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Uh, yeah, I want to ask him. Change. 
I didn't quite get you. Can you? That one, that one, a horizontal window. You can assist on that one. Which is... I didn't quite hear you. What were you saying? Uh, let's say we have got say our uh, let's say one. Uh huh. Let's say you of five hundred dollars a year. Uh huh. For 2019, and then for and then in 2020, our revenue is one thousand mm dollars. -hmm. So to recognize an increase, there's an increase. So to calculate percentage increase, we would say one thousand minus five hundred over five hundred mm -hmm. to get the percentage change. Okay. So they were planning that one horizontal analysis. I don't know. You can assist me on that one. Okay, so what is happening? What was happening on that one? Let's go back to our Zunda analysis here. Uh, okay, uh, let's say uh, you are saying uh, our property plan equipment in 2019 was uh, 6.1 uh, B, is it billion? Billion, yes. Then in 2020, it's now. Um, it's now uh, 5.9. So if we are going to say our 2020 balance minus our 6.1 balance is equal to this one, then we are going to divide this one by 2019 balance. That's what you are saying, isn't it? Is okay. It's 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 like it's now they are like digging deep uh, into the analysis, but uh, there was no analysis. We are still dividing, let's say, line item by the um, what do we call it by 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 the the total asset or the base cost that we have. Then we compare it to uh, the prior even 2019, 2018, 20. 2016, 2017, and so forth. That's how they were doing their horizontal analysis, but the only difference between horizontal and vertical is that we are doing it for more than one year. So the way you do your analysis might be different from what I drew myself, but the, the, the baseline is it is that for horizontal analysis, we should have more than one year. Okay, uh, I hope you I answered you correctly. Uh, do we have another one? Tafaza, do you have another one? No, okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes, yes, Carlos. I want to talk about um, it's the same way what I what I project. They want to have a broad thing, it's the same way what I project. You know? They want to see more for information for 2020. And when I see when let's say 2019 is our PSTA, and we just get the uh, we can manage the percentage change of what I did as well, and that's what I, I thought was more the photo analysis. Okay, okay, that's fine. Okay. Okay. So, uh, 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 now, uh, now I will go to where my question is. Like, let's, let's say we have biological assets um, uh, under current assets, and then we have biological assets under um, fixed, fixed assets. Can we actually edit the two, or we can do separately? Mm, no, 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 you won't add the two because if they are under current assets, that means they are current assets. If they are non under non current assets, that means they are non current assets. So you cannot add the two. If you add the two, you won't be able to make meaningful analysis because now it's like a, a, a goat with a cow's head. So you have to analyze those separately. You you would say biological uh, current um current portion of biological assets you analyze it different from current port non current portion of the same biological assets.
Okay, okay, that's fine. Okay, so um, as a concluding statement, uh, do you have other questions, Carlos? <clears throat> okay, so as a concluding statement, uh, as I said, okay, that's fine. As a concluding statement, um, as you can see, this was one method of doing a, a, a horizontal analysis. Another way of doing it was uh, uh, the, the one that was said by Carlos or, or who was it, Tafazwa. You can say this one minus this one. Okay, this one minus this one, then you divide it by, by this one. Okay, then you drag it up to down 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 here then you put percentages okay then we we have these errors we put zeros because it's either we are dividing by a now cell or we don't have anything in those cells okay okay And then you can comment on these ones to say, okay, here we have a minor change. Here for three percent, then we have zero percent because we didn't have a right of use assets. Here we have thirty-two uh, percent. Ah, uh, yeah, that one will be will be will be a problem because if we're saying we increase by thirty-two percent, also what does it mean? Maybe you might find a better way of explaining it. But mostly we are concerned, it depends with what the investor is trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. If the investor is actually uh, concerned about how the entity is managing their investment in loans, maybe they can use these methods. But if I want, let's say, as the managing director, I want to see how the structure of the balance sheet is changing or the structure of our company is changing, it's actually better off if I use this one. Because this one, I can actually see that um, my PPE in 2020, how was my PPE in 2020 comparing to total assets? As compared to how the same PPE was comparing to, 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 to the total assets in 2019. So it depends with how the, how the investor is trying to achieve and who is doing the, the analysis. I think that will be the best expansion for that one. For you, it will depend. You can do this one, you can do this one. The, 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 the two just to be correct. Okay, so if you feel that this one, to say this one with this one, you if you can comment on it to say, okay, so what does this 365% mean? Okay. Uh, Tafazo, okay. Uh -huh. I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing your screen. I don't know what happened. So I'm just going to pause for. Okay, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. I'm just going to pause for two minutes. I want to save my recording. Then I'll do a, a second recording where we'll be doing the text reconciliation. Okay, so just two minutes.